Hey everyone, I'm Tyler Kern, alongside the president of the Energy Solutions segment for Seco Environmental, Daniel Duncan. And today he is here to talk equipment and environmental protection. Daniel, thanks so much for being here. Well, thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to having this discussion with you. I am looking forward to it as well. So let's start off here. Can you tell us how Seco and specifically the brands within the energy segment are helping to shape the future of equipment and environmental protection? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the Energy Solutions segment is part of Seco includes uh, two key platforms. So we provide solutions for equipment protection and plant operations as well as environmental protection. And we've really been fortunate over a number of years we've assembled some of the top brands in the industry. Some of those brands that you might think of like Peerless, Burgess Manning, Arding Thermal Acoustic, Sound Technologies, FFOX, Flexstor, Mtrell, and Buell. We've really put together some of the premier leaders in that space providing solutions under both those platforms. And looking to the future, we continue to develop the uh, investment in um, the platforms and the portfolio of those individual companies and those brands, as well as look at new opportunities we can increase our capabilities, serve new markets, new industries, and even new applications within the existing industries. Hmm. So, uh, Daniel, tell me, why is equipment protection vital in plant operations? Well, plant operators are only making money if their plant's up and running, right? And uh, they obviously want to minimize operating cost and maintenance downtime, all those things that go with that that add additional cost and reduce the margins of their operation. You know, maybe I should give you a couple of examples of how we help with this. Yeah. One is uh, we provide high performance separation and filtration equipment that can be installed ahead of a compressor on a natural gas pipeline and protect the compressor from uh, fouling or, or things that might uh, destroy the operation of the compressor. Another example is um, we provide in a refining facility on the fluid catalytic cracker, we provide the cyclones that do the reaction for the FCC unit, the regeneration of the catalyst, so the catalyst is reused and the losses of the catalyst are minimized. But also importantly, we separate out the catalyst from the process flow so downstream equipment isn't negatively impacted. Hmm. Another example is an inline absorb absorption silencer that may be installed in the process piping of an LNG plant, and it helps prevent the propagation of noise to downstream and connected equipment. Absolutely. Now, environmental stewardship is obviously something that is at the forefront of, you know, for SECO and sustainability as well, something that's a massive topic these days, right? So how did the energy solutions technology support a cleaner, safer, and more efficient environment? Yeah, you're right. Um, certainly in today's world, uh, cheap, available energy sources are really key to growing the economic vitality of an area and therefore the standard of living of the people that work or live in those communities, mm -hmm. right? And uh, today, though, society is very demanding about delivering those energy sources in a way that, that protects our shared environment. And it's really important in the so-called license to operate that energy producers today provide uh, their, their product to these customers in a way that, that does protect that shared community. And we help support this by providing solutions that reduce air and noise emissions from plant facilities, as well as clean water for reuse and recycling in the plant facilities, as well as maybe discharge back into the environment. Fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. So SECO provides next generation solutions to new construction or greenfield plants and operating plant facilities or brownfield plants, right? And so can you tell me about the goals and spe specifications, areas of opportunities, as well as areas of concern from a customer perspective? perspective? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it is important. We do work across both those spectrums, mm -hmm. the greenfield solutions where there's somebody's constructing a new plant facility in brownfield. And the priorities do change for the customers in their selection process for a supplier like us. For a brownfield opportunity, for example, they may be more focused on certainty of project schedule, getting it done within the time that's allowed, making sure you're working safely because you're on their site in an operating plant facility, making sure that they have past experience that proves you're capable of doing what they need you to do in the time that they allow. Mm -hmm. and, uh, for a greenfield opportunity, it might shift a bit. The priorities actually might be more about acquisition cost and the initial technical adherence to the specifications they have. We're fortunate, I think, as a company because we really have been able to thrive in both of those scenarios. We've got a tremendous reputation for project execution, quality of work, we've got a great safety record so we can work in that brownfield scenario. And for the greenfield scenario, our our technology platforms offer great value and superior performance compared to a lot of other options in the marketplace. So we're really able to migrate across both those project types. How important is it for you as a company to be able to work 
across both of those different project types. Uh, certainly that yeah. versatility has to prove beneficial. Well, it, we're trying to maximize our market opportunities, right? And if I look at Greenfield, it's probably about 25% of our business today in my segment, mm -hmm. and probably Brownfield's around 65%. So it's really critical as people are investing in new plant facilities, we're there and we're able to support them. And in many cases, they're just expanding or retrofitting or improving the operation of existing facilities, particularly in North America, maybe less so in some of the international markets. So it's important that we're there for both. Absolutely. Now, I love discussing examples um, because I think it always helps drive home concepts and brings them into real life, right? So is there a standout install that you and the energy team proudly showcased uh, your commitment to equipment and environmental protection? Is there a, an example of that that stands out in your mind? Yeah, no. I, uh, in fact, if you'll allow me, I'll maybe offer two, two yes, examples. Yes, please. So there was a recent power gen opportunity in Northern California for a combined cycle power plant. And they were having a tremendous problem with the maintenance and reliability of the facility and their operating costs were extremely high. Mm. So they asked us to take a look at it, particularly the emission control system. So we looked at it and we offered and installed a new, reliable, safe SCR system to reduce the emissions in the plant facility and as well as allow them to do that with lowering their maintenance costs, their operating costs, and we accomplished all of that. In fact, not only did we reduce our maintenance and operating costs, but we increased the output of the plant facility by 5.5 megawatts, which is great for the owner of the plant, and we reduced emissions. In fact, NOx levels were reduced below two parts per million, CO below one part per million, and ammonia slip below five. So it was a win-win for both the owner and the community they operate in. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's that's absolutely a win-win, right? Yeah, I think so, and I got another one. Yes, so yes. For oil and gas, speaking of which, um, there was an oil and gas producer in North America that was having a problem with their enhanced oil recovery operation. And one of the things that we focus on in supporting our energy producers is by allowing them to improve the production out of existing fields, they don't need to go find and source and drill new wells, right? Mm -hmm. So they can maintain the flow and, and the hydrocarbons coming from the existing field. One of the ways they do that is with enhanced oil recovery programs. And a component of an enhanced oil recovery program is often using CO2 that might otherwise be emitted into the air as a pollutant and use it for enhanced oil recovery. In this case, they were doing just that, but they were having problems with the operation of the plant facility. Maintenance costs were high, downtime was high. So we looked at it and through a computational fluid uh, analysis of the existing plant flow and then replacing and retrofitting the separation and filtration equipment on their EOR system, we were able to find that uh, we could eliminate some fluid carryover that was clogging the nozzles that inject the CO2 and allow them to maintain their operation much more reliably and reduce cost. And this was a great example where we were able to bring together the environmental and the equipment protection because we created a situation with this end user, our customer, where they could take CO2 and put it to beneficial use rather than have it potentially emitted into the air and increase oil production at the same time. So a win again for the owner and the operator as well as the community they operate in. Those are fantastic examples and I think really exemplify what we're talking about here today and that's that's particularly exciting just to just to hear those use cases I think is fantastic. Um, so Daniel, what, what is the best way to enable growth of renewable energy, given some of the challenges that exist with energy storage and some of the other limitations? Well, it is growing a lot. I think maybe more so than many of us thought in mm. just a few years ago. But one of the realities of renewable power is it's intermittent, right? When the sun's shining, it's producing power in a solar field. When the wind's blowing, it's producing power. And when it's not, it's not. So what um, is required is a backup power source. And one of the best today is to use a quick start gas turbine burning clean natural gas. Mm. And increasingly, the gas turbine manufacturers are enabling the use to mix that natural gas with hydrogen, often what we call green hydrogen as a fuel source, which lowers the carbon footprint and the emissions, as well as it takes a fuel source that's generated through um, the production of hydrogen. And with green hydrogen, it also closely couples the gas turbine operation with renewables because green hydrogen is defined as hydrogen that's manufactured when renewable energy sources are at their peak and able to generate excess electricity to make the green hydrogen. It's then put in storage and when the sun's lower or the wind's not blowing as much, they can use that stored hydrogen to fuel the gas turbine. So it's a great example of an evolving area, but certainly that um, there's other things like energy battery storage and other things that are being looked at. They're just not quite where they need to be yet, and gas turbines are a reliable backup source. That's really exciting, and also just to, to know that there are technologies on the horizon, right? They, yeah. they will continue to improve 
um, battery storage and things like that to eventually maybe become more viable options as well, right? Exactly. Absolutely. So uh, speaking of the future, are there any initiatives in the near future that SECO has planned to increase your focus on equipment and environmental protection? You know, we have uh, a number of areas that we're investing in to improve the performance and the value we can deliver to clients because that's always top of mind as well. Um, we've expanded our water treatment portfolio considerably because we see it's not just air and noise that we wanted to focus on and we historically had, but we wanted to expand the ability to reuse and recycle water that's used in industrial processes. Mm -hmm. And then water that's produced through the oil and gas operation, make sure we can clean it and make it available for potentially reuse or discharge back into the environment. So those are areas we're looking at. We do operate globally too, so the needs are different across the globe as well. Are there any specific areas as you look globally that you think um, this might be an area that, that is worth taking a closer look at or worthy of more investment due to economic development in those areas or anything like that? You know, that? one of the areas we recently made significant investment in it was India. Mm -hmm. um, we established an engineering center there and have expanded our project execution and our sales capabilities there. We see the economic development accelerating there and we want to be present in the country understanding the needs that are specific to that area so that we can help them drive sustainable development development across that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, as we wrap up our conversation today, is there anything you want to say in closing, just as a summary, um, as a way to maybe wrap things up as we talk about equipment and environmental protection? You know, it's an exciting thing. I, I, you know, Just like we were talking about the examples where we can bring together benefits for both the owner and the operator, as well as do it in a way that, that improves the quality of life in the communities they operate in and mm -hmm. the customers that they serve. So that's, it's just an evolving time, too, for technology as we see renewables taking off, as we see global expansion and we're happy to be present in those locations and, and driving some of the development in support of both those objectives. Yeah, that's absolutely fantastic. Daniel Duncan, he is the uh, president of the Energy Solutions segment for SECO Environmental. Daniel, thank you so much for joining us. Thank today. you, enjoyed it. And everyone, thank you for tuning in to this episode from SECO Environmental. Everyone stay tuned for more from SECO in the future. But for today, I'm Tyler Kern. Thanks for watching.